A reading according to the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals, or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is in it and worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At a gathering this past Thursday morning, the black clergy from the bluegrass welcomed the white clergy, and they asked us to listen to them. They shared the reality of the economic of black, indigenous, and people of color in this country, in this state, in this commonwealth. They shared their experience that the justice system for them is not often equal or just. They gave witness to the disparity of the health care that they receive. And I think they did that with the fear that they would have to shake off the dust again. But we listened. And one white clergy person noted aloud to the group, 
that we as white people have the luxury of listening, of paying attention to these realities, and we also have the luxury to turn away, to ignore them, because we do. That is a truth about our country and our church. And in some ways, all humans have that luxury, but certainly as white Americans, we have a particular luxury to turn away, to scroll past yet another article about how black Americans are, die at three times, three times the rate of white Americans of COVID-19. We have the luxury of hearing yet another study of the wage disparity between white Americans and black Americans and that that disparity has increased and it now sits at $33,000 a year. And we have the luxury not really to worry about how that translates into the daily lives of fellow children of God. We have the luxury to know that popular history will tell the stories of people who look like us and that the stories of those in the margins will be a footnote or a short paragraph or perhaps even just forgotten. I have the luxury, I have the luxury to listen and to decide what I will do because make no mistake the ability to decide is a luxury. I have, as Rita euler biss states, an ability to move through my life without thinking about what my race means to other people and what my existence in a community means to the people around me. I have that luxury because I'm white. And I am also a disciple. I am one of Jesus's disciples, and most of you are as well. And we've been baptized. We have joined with Christ in his death and resurrection through the Holy Spirit as we proclaim our belief in God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. As we in the waters of baptism have promised to love and to confess and repent and to heal. And within the words of that covenant, in my baptism, I released that luxury to turn away, to ignore, to not notice. I put it down. We have promised to move through life as Christians and to think about what our presence means to the people around us and to do more. We have promised to respond in love and compassion and change, even a change of our own selves and souls. In today's gospel, Jesus summons his disciples and he gives them authority. He sends them out with instructions, go, proclaim, heal, notice, Listen, give, love. And then he adds this huge long disclaimer that this is really going to be hard. Because we live in a world that really doesn't want to heal and to notice and to give and love. Not really. We like to say the words. And we want those words, though, to allow us to stay just where we are. We want those words to allow us to stay where we have grown comfortable, to hold all the beliefs with which we're familiar, with which we've grown up. We want to stay listening to the voices that sound reassuring. We want the luxury not to notice. And not that there aren't times that we don't need to be comforted and reassured. Jesus reassures his disciples plenty of times because that is a part of love, but it is not the whole part of love. And it is certainly not the whole part of being a disciple. Discipleship is following Jesus and preaching love has a huge component of go, of movement, of change, 
Jesus tells us, now that you are my disciples, you must notice, you must act. The disciples are not charged to go into towns and evaluate the sick and decide which ones that they can heal because if they heal all of them, then that will cause an economic impact that we may not come from. And oh, the ones who are elderly or poorer or black, they don't really need to be healed. Jesus says, heal, period, full stop. They don't get to hear Jesus say, go into the cities and comfort those who mourn. But only if you say, you know, I think if you had been a little nicer to the Roman centurion and complied with the soldiers, they probably wouldn't have crucified your son. Jesus does not say that. Jesus says, go, blessed are you who mourn and disciples and Christians be with them. Jesus takes away their luxury because he reminds them and he reminds us of the disparities and the hardships and the crushing hate that exists and says, my disciples do not look away. They go. They listen. They speak up for those whose voices have been silenced. They feed the hungry. They heal the sick. They stand up and they kneel down and they do that with love and compassion. And we are called to do that with love and compassion. We are called to notice. And all of those things, all of this noticing is hard. Living in a time of pandemic is hard. Talking about racism is hard. Remembering that this weekend, many, many people died because they were gay and lesbian and bisexual and transgendered and continue to die is hard. Even finding a way to preach about the change that absolutely needs to happen in our country and our church regarding the entrenchment of hate in the soil of this land is hard. And there are certainly times that I want to return to that life before Christ and before baptism and have the luxury not to notice. But I released that when Jesus said, go, and I said, yes. We have released the luxury not to notice, not to pay attention, not to respond to those who have been beaten by the thieves of racism and hate and prejudice that steal and hurt and demean. Being a disciple means that we do not get to ignore the knees on the necks of God's beloved black children who cannot breathe the air of prejudice and hate that hangs in this country. Being a disciple means that we notice and we respond. We get uncomfortable. We listen and we pray we march if we need to march, and we kneel with our fellow children of God who need to kneel. We speak truth to power, and we know that that will cost us. And we remember that we are all finding our way forward, trying. I pray we are trying. Liz continues in her conversation on the podcast on being, if you're wondering, I will post it on Facebook. I'm allowing this embarrassment of recognizing my racism to just wash over me because I really deeply fundamentally believe in bumbling your way through a conversation about this subject because we cannot be silent. We just 
cannot be silent. We are disciples. The first disciples bumbled their way too, but they kept on, not silent, not separated, not justifying why they didn't want to notice. Jesus charged them to go, to heal, to do the work of love in this world that too often wants to look away. They went and Jesus charges us, all of us, go, look, notice, reject the luxury to ignore and act, act. And even, even when, not if, even when we bumble our way forward, because we will keep going, because this way of love is hard and uncomfortable, but it is the only way that we as Christians can walk. Keep on, keep on, that we, we as disciples, may join our voices with the 12, with the hundreds of thousands of saints who have preached against hate and racism, who have acted in centuries past, who have stopped to notice, keep on, that we may proclaim God's truth with boldness and minister Jesus' justice with compassion. Keep on that we will notice, that we will act. Amen.